And yeah, welcome back to Mocha Don is right. I am Mocha Don, and it is the day after Super Tuesday. Donald Trump won 14 out of 15 states with Nikki Haley bravely taking the state of Vermont. The Bernie Sanders socialist state of Vermont was the only state that Nikki Haley was able to win on Super Tuesday. She has officially suspended her campaign. She did not come out and endorse Donald Trump, which shows you what uh, a poor loser she is. And let's take a look at what else is going on. Um, MSNBC is screaming racism. Of course, that's what they do. Uh, here's a quick clip of that. President Trump making big gains this Super Tuesday, winning 14 out of the 15 states up for grabs, including the delegate powerhouses of California and Texas. Nikki Haley winning in Vermont. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. And they tell me, the pundits and otherwise, that there's never been one like this. There's never been anything so conclusive. This was an amazing, an amazing night. We're going to take back our country. We are going to do it right. We're going to have the greatest economy ever in the history of our country. We're going to top what we did. Meantime, President Biden solidifying his path to the nomination on the Democrat side with wins everywhere except the American Samoa. But there were some warning signs for the president, especially in Minnesota, where nearly 20 percent of people voted uncommitted instead of giving him their support. And here's how the media reacted to the Super Tuesday election results. Republican voters don't vote that way. They don't vote based on economics or based on the benefits they're getting economically from the president. They're increasingly, from the Tea Party on, they're voting on race. They're voting on this idea of an invasion of brown people over the border. The issue of race animates Donald Trump. The issue of race has long animated the evangelical movement. I don't think enough has been talked about that Trump has had way more votes against him in these primaries than President Biden. Um, you know, President Biden is dominating every primary contest in a way that Donald Trump would like to dominate, and he is not. Joe Concha is a Fox News contributor, and Joe joins us now. Joe, your reaction to what you just heard from the media from the race card to Trump's in real big trouble because he did not win 100 percent of the vote in each primary. <laughs> uh, it's the media, instead of crying wolf, crying race, Todd, right? And it's on MSNBC, it's as predictable as the sun rising in the east, birds flying south for the winter, and, you know, something we could agree on, the Cowboys losing in January. These are all predictable things. I, I, thank you. Uh, and I, I did enjoy how, you know, Rachel Maddow, whose picture you could find next to the word pious, criticized her own parent network, NBC, for airing Trump's victory speech. But to get back to that montage that you played, they say that Republican voters are only voting on race. No, exit polls show that they're voting on the economy and inflation. That's number one, according to our most recent Fox News poll. Number two is immigration. But it's not about brown people coming over the border. It's about budgets in major cities being exhausted in terms of cutting police, sanitation, education, in terms of fentanyl coming over and killing a record number of Americans. It's about the terror watch that we see as far as terrorists coming across the border, hundreds of them, according to the Department of Homeland Security themselves, uh, that have been apprehended. So this isn't a racism thing as far as how Republicans are voting. They're voting on security as far as this country. They're voting on economic security. Those are the top two issues on top of crime as well. But this is what that network pushes over and over again, because I guess they're telling their dwindling audience what they want to hear. Right. So <clears throat> a couple of things real quickly. First of all, Joe Biden ran unopposed. I mean, unless you consider Marianne Williamson some kind of opposition to Joe Biden, which I don't. She was uh, less of an effect than Nikki Haley, certainly. And then this bizarre idea that for some reason, if the people coming over the southern border were, were all white Irishmen, or Scotland had decided to invade from the south, that Republicans would think that is okay, is just insane. And it is actually reflecting the anti-white racism of the left and of MSNBC and, and their ilk. The other thing I would say is that 
in the Democrat primary, they're, they're actually voting in primaries for less than half the delegates. The so-called superdelegates of the Democrat Party control more than half of the, the votes for who becomes the nominee. That's why rational people think Joe Biden is not going to be the nominee. It would be no problem at all for the superdelegates during the convention to just get together and say, you know, we think Joe Biden's going to lose to Donald Trump, which he is. And then they proceeded to nominate somebody else. Take your pick, the evil Gavin Newsom or the America-hating Michelle Obama. Either one of those two. I really seriously doubt Joe Biden's going to be the candidate. I don't see him getting to that point. I don't see how the Democrats can retain him. I don't think they can go to Kamala Harris. She's a despicable individual hated by half the country, even more than Joe Biden. So they're going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat. And my guess is it's either going to be Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom. Either of those are actually worse for the country than um, insane, mentally deranged Joe Biden, uh, who is barely even present. The other thing I'd, I'd say is that it's absolutely odd that voters in Minnesota, 20% of Democrat primary voters in Minnesota voted for undecided, essentially none of the above. And that tells me that these are committed Democrats. They're showing up to a primary. Perhaps they care about a congressional race, or perhaps there's a ballot measure on and instead of just checking the obvious box for Joe Biden, they actually stopped and thought about it. They stopped and said, oh, wait a minute, I'm not checking the box for Joe Biden. That's 20% of Democrats. Half of that 20% of Democrats, when the, when the election actually comes in November, are going to check the box for Donald Trump. Please, Democrats, if you've decided to save the country and vote for Donald Trump, Please don't vote down ballot for some sycophant Democrat who is going to fight Donald Trump for the entire four years. Give Donald Trump a Republican Congress in both houses, the House and the Senate, so that he can do what needs to be done to fix this country. He's only got one more term. Okay, that being said, uh, there are terrorist threats against Donald Trump's life. Apparently, some criminal in New York is being hunted for making uh, terrorist threats against Donald Trump and against MAGA supporters. Also, apparently, uh, Governor Hochul, despite continuing to be a sanctuary state in a sanctuary city, is going to actually deploy the National Guard into the New York City subways because of crime. And Elon Musk lately has been predicting that something really bad is going to happen. I tend to agree with that. It actually seems fairly obvious. With the border open, we are primed for a terror attack. So terrorists have been flowing over the border. They catch a certain percentage of them. That's how we know they're flowing over the border. But hundreds of them get through, become gotaways, and so clearly, there's going to be a terrorist attack at some point in the United States. And clearly, Elon Musk and others have picked up on this. I think they're also going to try to assassinate Donald Trump. I think the, the Democrat Party and the powers that be are left with no, they're left with no other choice because they are going to lose to Donald Trump. Unless they kill him, he is going to be the next president of the United States. So I think they're going to try to assassinate Donald Trump. We may have a terrorist attack coming just because of our, our policies of Israel and, and what's going on in Gaza, even though Biden's really weak on Israel. And I think there's other things going on just because of the crazy violent left, all the criminals that are out. There is going to be some set of events that's going to take place 
that will make 2024 a very memorable and very disturbing year. I don't see a lot of positive things coming out of 2024 unless, of course, Donald Trump can survive, get elected president, and then survive long enough to be sworn into office. I, I think his life is in danger. For all I know, Joe Biden's life may be in danger. Uh, maybe he doesn't have the wherewithal to actually realize his, his time is up and step aside. So something bad could happen to Joe Biden. Anyway, Tim Pool uh, did a bit on his show about what's going on with the National Guard. Uh, let's take a listen to that. Kathy Hochul will be deploying National Guard members up to 750, as well as several state law enforcement into New York City subways. And they say it's due to crime sprees. It's kind of crazy. National Guard being deployed into the subways. Hmm. What's interesting is that we've learned a couple things in the past few days. Elon Musk says that the groundwork is being laid for something worse than 9-11. And it's because of the open border. We now have from Stephen Crowder, there is information coming out that there is a far leftist on the run who was wanted by he's wanted by the FBI for threatening the, uh, to commit a terror attack against Trump supporters. I think something dangerous may be coming. I mean, we keep hearing about these major outages. It was at and was Facebook, and they say it was a technical glitch, perhaps. But I have to wonder. I wonder if the real reason they're deploying National Guard into the subways is not because of crime. They don't care about crime. You know, Elon Musk makes a good point about how they don't deport these criminal aliens after they commit crimes when they could. It's an opportune moment. And it's because they want them there. They're likely going to become Democrat voters in the event of amnesty. But more importantly, they add to the numbers of the state, which allows them to get more congressional seats and effectively steal votes in Congress. I'm gonna, I, I, just want, I don't want to mince any words with this. The American people elect representatives. But if there are reps in Congress who are representing people who are not citizens, that's stealing votes. That's cheating. All right. Let's talk about what Tim just said. So New York City being a sanctuary city and New York State being a sanctuary state are deploying National Guard to the subways, about 750 of them, because crime is out of control. This is a state that lets people go without bail. This is a state that doesn't arrest people unless their crimes are already fairly serious. This is a state that's worked on defunding the police. And this is a state that's giving millions upon actually tens of millions of dollars away to illegal immigrants instead of helping their own people. Additionally, Tim pointed out there is uh, terrorist threats against MAGA people and against Donald Trump. I think that's something we can expect. But what's really going on with this immigration? Well, the people coming over, a lot of them these days, we hear about child trafficking, and that is certainly going on. In fact, CBP is actually engaged in child trafficking. That's being talked about a lot. We're going to do a piece on that in the future. But Consider for a moment, so many of these people coming over are military-aged single men. A lot of them are Chinese. We've seen Brett Weinstein and Tucker Carlson report on how these Chinese are coming through the border, and they're all military-aged men. Maybe we're being surreptitiously invaded by China. I don't know. But what are we going to do with all these military-aged young men? Well... Los Angeles would like to make them police officers. <laughs> there we go. They've started with the DACA folks, which I have a little bit of sympathy for the DACA folks. But seriously, we're going to make illegal aliens police officers, people who aren't even legally allowed to carry a gun. And they've asked for an exemption from the Department of Justice, which I think they've gotten because, you know, Merrick Garland's a criminal. But now we're going to have illegal aliens over in Los Angeles as police officers, and the military is not able to meet its recruiting goals because about anywhere from 60 to 66 percent of the military is recruited from southern states. They are predominantly white Christians. And, you know, the Biden administration doesn't want white Christian members of the military because 
you know, those people aren't going to fire on American citizens. While the Biden administration is busy disarming law-abiding citizens and releasing uh, criminals who have guns illegally that are felons for just possessing a gun, what they do is they don't charge them for the gun crime. They release them for the violent crime they've committed that's a state or city charge. And, and then they go right back out and get another gun because criminals can get guns. Criminals do criminal. That's why they're criminals. And perfectly law-abiding people just trying to protect their own lives, property, and the lives of their families are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This is absolutely crazy. It is batshit crazy. Unless there's a plan. And I think there is a plan. I think there's some kind of, perhaps it's WEF, you know, the World Economic Forum, some kind of agreement to uh, strip the West of its assets and its prosperity and spread that out over third world countries, giving you essentially uniform poverty. And with uniform poverty, by the way, comes uniform stupidity. And so you end up with people voting so that they'll get food stamps instead of voting to fix the problem and bring back prosperity. Capitalism is far from perfect. It doesn't equally (laughs) distribute wealth. But what it does do is it's a rising tide that lifts all boats. We have some of the wealthiest poor people in the world. Poor people don't think it can get worse. Let me tell you, it can get a lot worse. It can get a whole lot worse. And that's what I think this administration is trying to do. It's a little hard to come up with the complete conspiracy theory here. But as we know, the last five or six years, virtually all conspiracy theories have been proven to be true. This is one that makes no sense unless there's some sort of conspiracy to impoverish first world nations and bring them down to second and third world status. This is what Vladimir Putin is resisting in Russia because he's essentially, he's a lot of things. He is a criminal and other things, but he is essentially a conservative murderer. And so he doesn't want the crazies in Russia. They don't want the crazies in Ukraine, believe me. And it's the kind of thing where, if they keep this up, something's going to happen. Some, uh, some meeting of the minds where people say, you know, that's it. We've had our fill of this. We're going to organize and rebel. Yeah, civil war could be in the offing. I don't think that's going to happen this year. But something's going to happen this year that's bad. Something is being planned that we don't know about. None of this makes sense without that basic element of some kind of plan that we don't know about being true. So we'll have to wait and find out what that plan is. Anyway, thank you for watching. God bless. Please subscribe to the channel. We need your help. Subscribers is what we need more than anything else. But like, comment, subscribe. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.